Hi, this is Lexus Bill, host of Drive Time on Joy 99.7 FM. Listen, you don't have to worry if you miss Drive Time or personality profile. It's going to be live on our podcast page. Just log on to www.myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. You can listen to Drive Time, personality profile, and any other of your favorite shows on Joy FM on that page. You don't have to miss a show at all. Joy 99.7 FM Radio for discerning listeners. Hello once again. First up tonight, the Ghana Reinsurance Company is at the final stages of establishing its presence in Casablanca, Morocco to serve the Northern African market as it eyes the continent. Board Chairman of the company, George Otu, disclosed this after a short ceremony to swear in the newly reconstituted board of the Ghana Reinsurance Company. Here's more in this report. The Ghana Reinsurance Company has been operating in the country for the past 48 years as one of government subsidiary companies with the aim of helping to strengthen the financial sector and mobilize funds for economic growth. Swearing in the newly reconstituted board, Deputy Minister for Finance, John Kuma, charged the company to use the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement as a tool to expand its frontiers. He also charged the Ghana Reinsurance Board to collaborate with the National Insurance Commission to see to a smooth implementation of the newly passed Insurance Acts. I wish to urge Ghana Real to embark on expansionary drive into targeted markets in Africa to grow its premium income, especially in the face of AFTA. The government is working tirelessly to restructure the financial sector to develop the economy, as evidenced by regulators' cleanup efforts, increase in the minimum capital requirements for banks and insurance and reinsurance companies, the development of a capital market master plan, the establishment of the Ghana Amalgamated Trust to support the retention of local ownership in financial sector, the ongoing work to establish the Development Bank of Ghana and marketing Ghana as an international financial services center, to name a few. Responding to the charge, Board Chairman George Otu hinted that the company has strengthened its operations and is ready to enter new markets, thereby increasing profit for the state. He disclosed that the plans to enter the North African market is on course. Ghana Re has established a regional office in Cameroon to cater for the Central African zone and as a full subsidiary, 100% subsidiary, of Ghana Re Ghana in Kenya to serve the East African market. Work is currently in progress to open a third office in Casablanca, Morocco, to serve the Northern African regional bloc. Honorable Minister, we therefore pledge to continue to guide management through effective supervision and direction to enhance shareholder value and meet the interests of all relevant stake stakeholders. Ghana Reinsurance has seen an increase in its premium in the last four years and paid about 37 million CDs as dividend to government. Now, the Registry General's Department has finalized the move to strike out 220 institutions from its registry beginning October 1, 2021. Now, the companies failed to update their profiles and file returns for several years after being reminded by the department. The Registry General, Jemai Mawari, tells Joy Business that her outfit has reached out to most of these recalcitrant firms and ready to delete their names. She explains further. Out a list 
of businesses that had not filed annual returns up to date. We took them through the whole process of uh, putting out notices, giving them an opportunity for them to come and update us on their records. It hasn't happened. So we started calling the various businesses individually. And out of that, we have about 222 companies that have voluntarily given us the permission to go ahead to strike the names of the register because they are not doing business. They are not carrying on business. So what we intend to do is from the 1st of October, we will publish these names in the dailies and in the gazette. And then after that, we'll strike their names of the register. What that means is they cannot come back and anybody who wants to do business with them, you'll not find their names on the register. But as we put it out, if there's anybody out there that you know these businesses owe, it's an opportunity for you to come back and inform us so that we'll put a hold on that one until you settle your debts before the names are taken off the register. And we'll continue this process of um, updating the records till the end of the year, and then we'll put out another list. So as we, as we put out the notices, people realize that we are really serious. We have to make sure that uh, you update us as and when you have to. By not updating us, what that means is that you are not carrying on business, and people should not then do business with you. If you are seriously wanting to do business in Ghana, then you have to update us and, and pay your um, whatever penalties and file your financial statement. So we do business with you. Yes. Has there been a situation where like, they tell the reason why they cannot continue their business? Okay. You remember the last time I said most people registered initially just for the sake of registering a company, maybe just for maybe a visa or a contract and didn't really understand what it is to have a company and the, 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 the serious implications it comes up with. So once they got the contract or they didn't get the contract, they didn't bother. So it's been sitting on our database for over eight years. They've never filed any returns and it's just sitting there and, and taking up space. So we want to be able to know viable companies that are doing business in Ghana. That's why we're going around this exercise. So punishment or penalties for them? Yes, I mean, those who we're going to strike off, obviously, we can't really collect any penalty. They are not interested in carrying on business, so we'll just take it off. But any other person who is interested in carrying on business will have to come and pay the penalties and restore the company back to the good standing it's supposed to be in. Now, government will launch the National Critical Information Infrastructure Directive uh, next month, a move that will aid the fight against cyber crimes. According to the Communications and Digitalization Minister, Esther Usukufu, preparations are almost complete to ensure resilience against cyber attacks. She was speaking at the opening of the one-week residential training on artificial intelligence with career guidance for girls in ICT, the tertiary schools edition, supported by Huawei Ghana. More in this report. The Ministry of Communications and Digitalization has disclosed that the Critical Information Infrastructure Act will be effected next month. Speaking on the sidelines of the residential training on artificial intelligence with career guidance for girls in tertiary schools, the minister, Esla Ousu Ekufo, stated that the act will be launched as part of cybersecurity celebrations in October. We've identified over 150 sectors, well, companies, that are critical to the survival of our country and which, if attacked, um, in which if they suffer a cyber attack, will cripple um, our, our, our country's um, socioeconomic development. And so once designated, the Cyber Security Center will work with you and if they prescribe measures and you do not um, abide by them, they are empowered to issue administrative penalties to ensure our collective security. So that's what we'll do the designation this week and then the whole program will be launched during the Cyber Security Month celebrations next month and then we'll start working with the sectors to bring up um, their systems to acceptable international levels. So we're giving effect to the Cyber Security Act which was passed in December last year. As part of actualizing the Women for Tech initiative, Huawei Technology all right, you're watching Business Live. Still to come, we head to the Upper East region where customers of defunct diamond winners microfinance company are asking government's uh, help to retrieve deposits locked up for over five years. As of now, we don't know the whereabouts of the defaulted. Do we know where they are? Some customers have lost their lives. 
Marriages have been broken. Oh. And many people are still facing problems with their bankers. Hi, this is Lexus Bill, host of Drive Time on Joy 99.7 FM. Listen, you don't have to worry if you miss Drive Time or personality profile. It's going to be live on our podcast page. Just log on to www.myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. You can listen to Drive Time, Personality Profile, and any other of your favorite shows on Joy FM on that page. You don't have to miss a show at all. Joy 99.7 FM Radio for discerning listeners. Welcome back uh, to Business Life. Now, customers of defunct Diamond Winners Microfinance Company, the Upper East Region, say they have not been able to recover from the loss of their investments following the closure of the company over five years ago. The Diamond Winners Microfinance Company was closed down by government along with DKM Micro. A finance company and several others after the Bank of Ghana found out that they were operating in contravention of uh, some banking regulations. But several years after they were closed down, these companies say their deposits were never returned to them. At a press conference held in Bogatanga, their aggrieved customers said their lives have been virtually destroyed since they are unable to retrieve their deposits from the microfinance company. Guma William Osman spoke on behalf of the customers. Dama Wena Macro Finance Company was closed down by the regulatory authority, that is the Bank of Ghana, in 2015. Customers were not given prior information to retrieve their deposits before the shutdown. The defaulters or money of the fund were not apprehended and detained to face justice and for customers' money to be refunded to them because, as of now, we don't know the whereabouts of the defaulters. Do we know where they are? Some customers have lost their lives. Marriages have been broken. Oh. And many people are still facing problems with their bankers oh. for their inability to pay back loans, yeah. taking an interest continue to accrue or accumulate. Yeah. Some people have gone insane or mad, oh. while others have committed suicide. Oh. Very terrible. Many businesses have collapsed as a result of money locked up in Dharma Wina Macro Finance Company. Many passengers retirement benefits were locked up and as of now cannot even purchase needed drugs yes. for their chronic illnesses. 
and some are not here because of that. Yes. Their parents. Students could not go to school or further their education as a result of money detained by the Winner Macro Finance Company. Yes. The Bank of Ghana did not take measures to safeguard the interests of customers before and after the shutdown. After the closure, Bank of Ghana did not take the proud of the customers but left them to their fate. Bank of Ghana is paying other defunct macro finance companies by excluded gamma winners. Why? 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 The customers of defunct diamond winners microfinance want government to take steps to help them retrieve their deposits. Some of them have been speaking with Joy News. The money I had for my daughter's education outside, I invested it in the company, hoping to make something small. In fact, this is the admission letter my daughter had to study medicine in, in Ukraine. But when they took off with our monies, uh, uh, she could not go. I'm in a market. I used to have a group. My fellow women coming together to form a group. And we take loans for our businesses. So in fact, the money that we're using for our business and whatever we're using all locked up from the uh, diamond winners due to this closing of these people. And now my business is down. So in fact, we are crying and appealing to the government to come to our aid. I'm making a seller. I invested there to take care of my children because they have no father. And I invested the money, no, the money is not coming. When you collect the loan, you still pay the loan, nothing is there. So we are pleading to the government to come out and have sympathy of us. Well, from the Upper East region, we head to the Ashanti region where the ARB Apex Bank has retweeted the need for member banks to accelerate the employment of financial technologies into their banking operations. The rural and community banks, which operate mostly in rural areas, are under intense competition to embrace the chain to stay afloat. Managing Director of ARB Apex Bank, Alex Iwa, is positive. The rural and community banks play a critical role in, the close, in closing the financial literacy gap through fintech. Prince Pia has more in this report. In the wake of cheap data and access to mobile phones, rural and community banks are being encouraged to accelerate digital solutions to be competitive in today's world of banking. Alex Iwa is Acting Managing Director for ARB Apex Bank. It is very important that uh, we increase the pace of uh, delivering training and development to uh, our people. This is the key because the rural community banking industry should not be left behind and if it's we are in technology digitalization era it is most important that uh, we also quicken the pace at which uh, we also give uh, training skills development and improve the capabilities of the entire industry people so that our industry will also can, uh, can also stand shoulder to shoulder with all the other industries that is the his statement resonates with the theme of the 40th anniversary of the Kuapim Rural Bank, which is 40 years of existence, the impact in our community. Kingsley Tre is general manager. For their support over the past 40 years. It's not been an easy journey, but looking at our records and our performance over the 40 years, the Kuapim Rural Bank has lived up to its mission of being a model rural bank. In Ghana. And on these notes, we would like to appreciate what the communities have contributed to the success of the man. And for that matter, we donated electrical items for the community lighting at Mamfi. We also donated a place of convenience for the police service in Mamfi. Board Chairman Kwame Jeke Amwako says the bank will continue to put the community at the center of its business operations. And uh, our main objective is to grow the bank and lift it higher than what we have left, we came to see. Today, we're lucky to have people like the presidential advisor, I mean, Dr. Sam, Mr. Samuafu, and Dr. Addison, the Bank of Ghana governor, all blessing the, the occasion. And they congratulated us for coming up with very good uh, 
performances. And, this, and also we're appealing to the whole public to come and buy shares in the company. We are the most compliant bank in the whole rural industry. Special guest Mount Fehini Osaberima and Sasa Shaku III and former finance minister Yao Osafumafo reiterated the bank's support to the growth of the local economies. The bank, as part of its celebrations, donated to its operational areas and organized a quiz competition for students at junior high schools in Manfe. A final one for us tonight. Chief Executive of Premium Africa Holdings, Farouk Highland, has urged entrepreneurs to make their products valuable to attract finance so they do not go searching for donors. According to him, investors are more concerned about getting value that can help them propel their ventures. He spoke at the first Joy Business Campus Roadshow at the Valley View University. Speaking at the maiden edition of the Joy Business Campus Roadshow, Mr. Kailan encouraged the students not to give up, even when there are no funds, but to become valuable as they will attract funds. But money will chase you when there's value. When I see value in you, now even some of the financial institutions, I have friends who are working with banks, but on the side, they are looking for people who are hungry, who are doing things, to also invest in them. You understand? So finance shouldn't stop you. You have to keep pushing pushing, pushing. You don't get finance, you attract finance. Now startups, especially those in the fi fintech space, you hear a company has been bought for 200 million. They use the immediate resources available to them, the little internet data they had, to just to propel themselves. Meanwhile, founder of Hack Lab Foundation, Foster Akugri, suggested that it is important to work in a group. According to him, it is okay to involve others who understand one's goals and leverage their prominence to succeed. Put in all the efforts to be seen. And so you create a nice poster with a nice caption about your business and post it on the right channels to draw attention to you. When you're attracting people to you, you need a medium to be able to do that. You need to rely on external platforms to create what we call inbound traffic. Creating inbound traffic means, first, when you start a business, nobody knows you. So do you have a friend who has 1,000 followers, who has 500 followers, and are willing to post on their page, or whatever it is, to vouch for you, to say, oh, my friend is starting a business, support by following the page. That is awareness creation. That is the, where the buyer's journey starts. Head of Joy Business, Odilia Ntiamwa, believes in strategically maintaining relationships to be successful. According to her, keeping good relationships influences one's success. Connections. You have to value your connections. People that come to your life that are in position, you have to keep those relationships and value them. Keep your relationships. And please, relationships that you have you need to be able to categorize them. There are some people you should never ask them for anything. In terms of going to a person and saying, oh, I'm broke, I need this. Sometimes you have to keep your pride. You can be broke, but keep it to yourself. You haven't eaten, but keep it to yourself. It will reach a point, these people themselves will ask, what can I do for you? What can I, what can I do to make your life better? You get it? Sometimes we are just too quick to satisfy the current and ease, and then we just spoil the relationships. Great stuff. And that's Business Life tonight. Thanks for watching, everyone. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com. Goodbye.